All right, hello everybody. In today's wiring video, we're going to be working on this Dewhurst fixture. And before we get started, we have someone here to talk about this particular button. Before we talk about my button, I put European ballast in my preheat fluorescent light and watch it. That is epic. Well, anyway, that fixture is very, 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 very sentimental to me because it came out of a Lake Barkley Lodge in Cadiz, Kentucky, and Mike from DC Elevator gave it to me. I pressed that button when I was 12, 13 years old. So anyway, this button has some pretty interesting history, and it is now right here in the STL Elevator's elevator workshop, where we're gonna make it do something pretty cool. So this here is a, there goes diesel to who see. So here we have a Dewhurst elevator fixture. And these are not super common here in the States, but for those of you people from Europe or England or even Canada, you've probably seen these all over the place, but these aren't super common here in the States. So we have a pretty basic panel here, nothing super exciting, has a little bit of scratches and damage on it. The button itself, see is very shiny and it's got this little red ring all the way around. You might not even notice it, but it's there. So turning it to the back, we can see the little sticker manufactured by Dupar Canada. So you can see this button is from Canada, which kind of explains why you see it in Canada a lot. And here we have the actual back of the button, which we can see is pretty big and pretty solid looking. So we're going to take this button off and take a closer look at it. So as soon as you pull the two nuts off, the first thing you'll notice is it gets very wobbly and we can pull off the base just like this. And this is what the base looks like. Then we have the two springs, which are on either side of this little red piece. And here you can see the red piece comes out and this is also the button. And here we have the little frame which goes around the button. Here's what it looks like without the button in place. And then we've got these two small washers here. And then we've got this little, uh, little bit right here. So taking a closer look at each piece individually, here we have the little frame, which this is what you would see in the front. You got the little metal frame and then the button. Here's the actual button which we can see has a very thin ring of red plastic all the way around. That's all you can see, but actually it's a pretty big piece of plastic. So it appears there is no way to easily remove the arrow and replace it unless you pushed it off and put another one in. So we won't be doing that, but this one is just an arrow. And you can see this here is the red plastic which lights up. And then our little springs sit on this little bit here. And here we have the last bit, which is our base. And you'll notice here on the side, we've got two contacts. We've got this little switch. You can see it's got this little uh, little pin, which pushes down, and then the metal piece pushes down onto these two contacts and makes a circuit. And the same thing can be found on the other side. These are both riveted on here, so they're not easily replaceable, but you could replace them if necessary. Then on the bottom here, we have our lamp socket and our holder. And the lamp socket's kind of interesting. So this bit here, it looks like it could like twist, but no, it just pulls off. And inside we've got a standard little lamp here, 120 volts. And then the actual holder, we've got these pins here, but if you pull on it, it pops off. So you could actually have an interchangeable lamp socket here. So I think that's kind of interesting. And then this just clips right back on in here, just like that. So you can see that button is pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. So now let's take a look at how to wire it. So on the back, we've got a pretty straightforward pin system. Each of these pins corresponds to one switch. So we've got two separate switches, but we're only going to need one. And then we have these four pins, which are actually in reality, the same thing. You can see here, they're both connected together. So each of these will do the same thing on that side. So what we're going to do, I've got these little, little pins here, these little connectors, so we don't have to solder. We can put these on here. We're just going to connect our battery pack to the switch and then connect it to our lamp. It's a very, very basic circuit. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here we have a very simple wiring job, very easy, nothing too complicated. Now next we have to lighting this thing. So like I showed you before, we have this small little bulb. So we ordered some bulbs on eBay, however, these bulbs are the same type of bulb, 
only they're a little bit smaller, which is kind of a problem. But what I've done is I've kind of pulled the little metal pieces out, and you can see now that the bulb sits in there. And we can go ahead and use it just like this. Even though it's not the right size, it still holds in, and it'll work off a 9-volt battery. Right, so we've got our 9-volt battery on and our lamp in, and you can see it works perfectly. When you press it in, the ring lights up, and it looks very awesome. So the last thing I'm going to do is just attach the little battery to the back with some Velcro. And that's going to be it for this wiring. This is a nice, short, easy wiring on a button that will be going back to the Elevate Tours Elevator Museum. So what do you think of the button? I think it's awesome. And he's working on his floor. heat fluorescent light fixture. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little elevator part video. Hope you learned something from it. And we'll see you guys next time.